Hi, my name is Nguyen. I'm from Vietnam. My essay is about religion and friendship. Win-win. Can we go with that? Okay. Originally from Vietnam, he's currently in college in Alabama. He's studying communication and graphic design because he loves to draw and create. Uh, he secretly wanted to become a comic artist who tells stories with pictures and brings people together with humor and mirth. His fear is that the world goes the wrong way, that it turns to the steep descent of violence because people do not try to understand those who are different from themselves. And that, he says, is a very dull life. So win-win, liven us up. Thank you, Dr. Paul, for everything and for making the effort to pronounce my name. <laughs> I come from a far, far, far away country, one on the other side of the earth that is only known for fighting against big superpowers and push for our specialty during war times and um, battle traps were among our favorites. Would you like to try some? Welcome to Vietnam. <laughs> so when I came to America for the first time last year, I understood that there were tons of things that I needed to learn and prepare for. I studied American history, I watched shows like Lee of Friends or Desperate Housewives, and I'm not going to share with that. Um, I even took the SAT 2 US history test, and I cannot be happier to keep my scores correct. <laughs> so through those preparations, I, I was aware that some American people could be very religious, but I was overly confident that I could get along with everybody and that everybody would like me if I'm sincere enough. So reality slapped me in the face one evening during my first month in America, in my college dining hall. I was sitting with this redheaded girl whom I had just met a few days before. Um, she is one of the smartest, sweetest and most caring people that I know and I just learned that she is Jewish. So I asked her um, out of curiosity, so you celebrate Hanukkah instead of Christmas? She said yes. And so I keep asking her, uh, so uh, for example, we people from Vietnam, we are usually not religious. So to us, Christmas is just like an occasion to have fun. So would, if we throw a Christmas party, would you join us? She was silent. She was avoiding eye contact, and then she gazed out at something far and distant, and then she said, no. So I was shocked, and but I tried to sound reasonable. I asked her, um, no, not even as friends, not even if that would make us sad. She, she spoke, she, she just like gazed out at the table, and she spoke very slowly and deliberately. My friends are very important to me, but my religion is special. So I, I couldn't tell her that it kind of made me sad, that I feel like there's some separation between us that shouldn't exist in the first place, because in our culture, we do not take religions as seriously. In Vietnam, we worship our ancestors, our grandfathers, grandmothers, and great-grandparents who pass away, because we believe that as a family, they will send a blessing from above. So under their protection, we do not feel the need to look for any supreme god or any higher power to fear or to be afraid of the way some people here do. So you see, I'm gay. So during my darkest time, I would, when I was struggling with my own prejudices of myself and of others, my friends were the family that I could turn to. They were the first one whom I confided in about my very first outbreak. Um, they, were the, they were the people who I, who, who brokered my coming out letter to my family and insisting that whatever happened, they would have my back. So to me, friendship is more about the synchronization of the souls rather than the sameness of skin colors, of economy, economy status or religion. So I was confused and he wondered when somebody allowed religion to put a boundary between herself and the people who could become the home for her heart. Why do religions, supposed to teach love and acceptance of all, create such prejudice and barriers among humankind? That kept me thinking for a while. So after a while, I just decided to shake it up, to, to forget it. I will put the religion talk aside. 
I will come to people the way I came to them when we first met. As individuals wandering across the international party looking for friends because we were all sad and lonely. And so we did become friends based on our personalities, my colleague jokes and their banters, and something inside us that just clicked. Actually, there's an American girl, a devout Christian, who whenever she sees me on campus, she was go like, win! And sometimes I feel like, are you okay? Do you need to, do we need to talk? Like, is there any issue that so I plan I never told her that, but the point is that we can be friends with almost anyone. But it's very important to make the first move, to take the first step, to show up and to be seen, and despite the potential rejection. That is vulnerability, and vulnerability is courage. So what about creating a place where people who are students of different religions can come together and expose ourselves to each other, where fun is a sin and understanding is the code? We can always start with student leaders who are more willing and mature enough to break through the initial social awkwardness. Let the leaders converse. Let them have fun with each other. Let them like each other and things will go much easier once we like each other. Because we would want to follow the trivial differences. You, you can probably tell that I'm not a very religious person. In fact, I wouldn't be standing here talking at all. If the experience with the red-headed girl did not force me to realize yeah, that it is a reality that our beliefs can stifle our chances of becoming friends. We are human. Before we put on our, our before we put our, put different uniforms on our bodies and different devotions on our minds, we are all born naked, with the same soul that longs for connection. The ancient Indians believe that every religion in the world contains a special threat and that all these threats are always looking for each other. Probably that's the way it should be. Instead of, trying to, instead of shutting out each other, instead of trying to replace faith with certainty, I am right, you are wrong, shut up. Maybe we should actively look for each other, listen to each other and build ourselves up together. You may be tempted to live a life, a comfortable life, without having to adjust to differences. But at the end of your life, what do you want to say, looking back at your time in this limited space? That you have lived, have learned, have opened your heart, despite the anxiety and, and, and nervousness, and that you feel like everybody strong in this planet is your friend, your brother, your sister, or that you have played safe. The answer lies with you. Let's laugh together, so we can cry together, and only when we can cry together can we truly live together. Thank you.